Hi everyone, my name is Jake and welcome to another edition of Tutorial Tuesdays. This week I'm going to show you how to set up a third person um, character controller, at least part of one that will allow you to click a location in your level and have your uh, player or enemy or, or what have you move to that uh, location. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is just create something for our character to walk on. So I'm just going to make a cube. I'm just going to scale it up here. And I'm just going to drop something on it to give it a little, little bit of color. Um, and then... Uh, we're going to need something to actually uh, move. So again, I'll just make another cube and we'll use that for now. So let's see if I just hold V here, I'll grab a vertex and I'll align it with that one so that I know it's sitting directly on top of my cube. So you just hold V, hover over a vertex, and then use your mouse to move it. <clears throat> so, we've got our cube set up, and I think I'm going to actually just quickly create another material here, just so we can see it a little bit better. Let's go with red, apply that there, and actually I'm going to duplicate this, and rather than having that colored block there, I'm just going to make this one say blue blue and red something like that sure okay so now um, we can go ahead and uh, add something to this game object called a nav mesh agent um, which is basically unity's built-in uh, AI uh, pathfinding thing that it has um, so we don't need to really worry about any of this stuff. We can just leave that uh, as it is for the purposes of this tutorial. So now that we have this nav mesh agent attached, and we, if we scroll in here, we can see this little circle here and these lines that come down from it. Those are actually the nav mesh agents, um, like bounding cylinder that shows the height and the radius of the nav mesh agent, which is the radius determines how uh, narrow of corridors it can go through and things like that. Um, so, all right, so now we have that set up, and we need to, I guess, now write some code to have our player, or whatever it is we'll call this player, have our player go where it is that we want to go. So I'm going to just write this character controller, or character mover, how about that, because that's all it's going to do. Okay. So the main thing we're going to be interacting with in this script is the nav mesh agent. So we'll go ahead and say private nav mesh agent, and we'll just call it agent. It's going to bark at us because we need to import Unity Engine dot AI. Um, and so now we have that, and we can say agent equals get component nav mesh agent. Not right. And then uh, basically what we're going to want to do, I guess, is um, if the user clicks somewhere on the level, we'll want to um, find out where in the 3D world space they've clicked and tell our agent to move to that um, location. So let's see. Uh, we say if input.getMouse button down zero so that's gonna be our left mouse button uh, then what are we gonna want to do we're gonna want to create a ray uh, because what we're gonna want to do is ray cast but we're gonna need a ray for that and we'll say ray ray equals camera dot main so this will get the main camera and um, this will get the main camera and we're gonna want to call a function on this called screen point to ray so basically what that does is it gets a point on the screen um, which in our case is going to be our uh, mouse's position, our cursor's position, and it will uh, basically fire a ray 
from the camera that intersects that point. Um, and it allows us to get a position from that. So we're, what we're going to want to give in here is input dot mouse position. And that's our array. So that'll draw an array through whatever area we click. And that'll, uh, we can get some information from this ray cast uh, about where exactly we hit. Um, but before we do that, but before we do that, we can uh, have to create this other thing. It's a ray cast hit, which is the thing that stores information about any hits that happen um, when you actually ray cast. Uh, ray cast hit, and we'll just call it hit. And we don't need to <coughs> um, instantiate it or, or uh, initialize it, rather. So uh, next thing we're going to want to do is actually our ray cast. So we'll say physics dot raycast and we say ray that's why we created our ray and then we also want to give it our hit so we say out hit and that just tells it to store any information about any hits that happen in that raycast hit object and that's it for that one um, now what we say is if um, hit dot transform so we say if we hit something then we can say agent dot set destination, and we'll pass in um, hit dot point, which gets the actual point that we hit. If we just pass in transform, it'll pass it in like the center of whatever game object we clicked. But if we pass in hit dot point, it'll actually tell us the exact location where our click happened or where our array hit the object. Um, and set destination. Not only does it set the destination, but it also initializes or initiates movement of our nav mesh agent along its path, um, which we'll show here in a minute. So before we do this, though, before we do that, though, we'll go ahead and just look at uh, what the current functionality of this is. Um, so we've got a character mover, we've got our nav mage mesh agent set up, um, and actually, there's one more small bit of configuration that you need to do in order to make this work properly. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to move my camera so that the view is similar to um, my scene view. Uh, let's see, align with view. There we go. Now, um, if I just hit play here, we've got our cube, or player rather, cube, um, and it's nav mesh agent as character mover script. If we click around. Nothing's happening, but we can see down here we get this error that says set destination can only be called on an active agent that has been placed on a nav mesh. Well, we haven't set up a nav mesh here. So basically, um, you go to navigation, and it's super pretty, pretty simple. Uh, typically, all you do is you just go bake, and then you click bake, and it'll give you a nav mesh. But it's not doing anything right now because we don't have any static objects in our scene. Basically, um, you have to mark it as static, as an object that's not going to move, so that um, when Unity calculates your nav mesh, it takes that object into account, knowing that it's not going to move, and so it, it will consider it an obstacle, which any nav mesh agent will have to navigate around or that it can walk on. But in order to do that, you have to go, there are a couple ways. You can go over here and you can click, you can check this box static, it makes it light map static, navigation static, all kinds of different things in there. Um, or you can just go down and select it as navigation static specifically or in your navigation window which you get to by going window navigation by the way um, you can have your object selected go to object and then select navigation static here so that's three ways you can set it to be navigation static and um, you saw before when I clicked bake nothing happened now when I click it we'll see a little faint blue square show up on top of this so there you go we can see that nav mesh there now. And this is basically the walkable area um, of our level. So now if we hit play and we click around the level, our cube turns to face the direction that it's going. And it goes there. Um, now, that's pretty much your controller set up um, for, you know, click to move. Uh, type controls like Diablo. Speaking of Diablo, we'll make it one small tweak here. Currently it's set to every time you click it sets a path. 
small change would be just to say get mouse button. So every frame that you're holding the mouse button down, um, it'll it'll uh, reset the path to wherever your mouse currently is. And so now our cube will follow my cursor around. And um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh yes, so the, the navigation static thing and baking your nav mesh. Basically you want to bake it every single time you make a change to your level that's going to affect the um, walkable area of the level, you're going to want to rebake the nav mesh. And I'll show you why this is. So if we go game object, 3D object cube, and we make another cube, and we move that up here, and move it down here, say, and uh, let's see here. I'll drag it out this way to go all the way to the end there, and out like this. Um, I'll duplicate it, move it here, move it there, and th that should be fine, I think. And we grab our player, and we move him to the far end of the level here. Now, what, what do we expect to happen now? Um, the nav mesh agent actually has AI that knows where to go um, to get to a certain point. So if we look here in our game window, um, if I click here, the cube's going to move there. That's great. If I click here, the cube's going to move there. It knows how to get where it's going. Um, now, if I were to click here right now, what's going to happen? Uh, we would expect that it would find a path that would go around like this and then come over here. But, because we haven't rebaked re the nav mesh, it just goes straight through. Um, which isn't what we want. And let's see here. These... Oh, we, we haven't got rigid bodies set up on these objects, which is why they're just passing through them like that. Um, but obviously this would be a problem if you had everything, all the components set up that you needed. Um, so what we need to do then is uh, we can click bake again, and let's see if this changes our nav mesh here. We click bake and nothing happens. And the reason for that is that these aren't set as navigation static. So if we set one cube as navigation static, that's this one. We should see this blue area come out around it when we click bake this time. And so actually what's happening is that it's saying, oh, the uh, nav mesh agent can walk over this. So it's actually moving it up over that. So there are a couple ways to fix that. Um, what well, all we're going to do is just move these up a bit. And then we'll click bake again. There. Now we see this path, this walkable blue area cuts off. But only for the cube that's marked as nav mesh static or navigation static. So we'll do this for both. We'll click bake. And now we'll try this again. Now if we click, we can see I just clicked right here, and our nav mesh agent is now finding that path around those obstacles to get to its goal. And if I click back over here, we'll see that occur again. And uh, something that might also help you understand what's going on with this is just visualizing the path. So um, we'll do this as well. We'll say um, if agent dot has path. Then we'll say um, for int i equal to zero, i less than agent dot path dot corners. So this just gets each um, turning point in the nav mesh agent's path. So every time it changes direction, that's what corners holds, um, and you'll see that in a second. So um, so we'll just do this for loop, and we'll say um, what is this saying? Oh, sorry. Path that corners dot length and minus one. Um, then we'll say debug dot draw line, and we'll say agent dot path dot corners um, i agent dot path dot corners i plus one. So basically what it's asking for is a start position here to start drawing the line at this position and then draw the line to this position. So this will get the current point in the path. This will get the next point in the path. 
and we're gonna want to give it a color of say color color dot red just to make it easy to see um, so now this will visualize our path for us and we'll go back and we'll change our uh, our nav mesh again we'll mark these as uh, not static so we can actually see what happens so uh, I'm gonna deselect this and just go like this so now we can see that red line is the path and these points here one two three four those are the corners so those are the nav mesh agents turning points um, and you can see this is how it's calculating the path wherever it is that I click um, and it's pretty fast it knows uh, really well how to um, find where it needs to go um, and now if we go ahead and we mark these as not static and we go back and we rebake so that we get this whole thing we can now get a better understanding of what exactly is going on uh, with why it was moving through those uh, so if I click here, we just see this path now draws straight through. I'm just gonna see that line just draws straight through. It's like, oh, these aren't obstacles; they're just geometry. Um, maybe they're decoration or something. You need to act, uh, specifically tell the nav mesh agent that they're obstacles in order for it to work. And so that's really it in a nutshell. Um, you can click wherever you want. You can see as I'm clicking, it's setting this path, and I guess. Just for uh, completeness, I'll mark this one as navigation static again. I'll rebake. And then we can go ahead and see what happens with how it calculates the path with one of these. See, one of them's an obstacle and it goes around it. The other, it doesn't consider to be an obstacle and it just goes through it. So that's the importance of rebaking and ensuring that all your static objects are marked as such. Otherwise, any any nav mesh agent will just move right through it. Um, so anyhow, that's it. Uh, if you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also check out our Facebook page. There'll be links to each of those in the description below. Um, also, if you like uh, old school single screen arcade shooters, um, check out our game Pixel Zombie Shooter on Newgrounds or Congregate. Links to that will also be provided in the description below. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.